Are, they, are you sharing a screen? Yes. Let oh, me know okay. if you can see it. Yeah, okay. I can uh, see. Can you see the deck? Yeah, yeah we can see the deck. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just a quick uh, 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 disclaimer that this call is being recorded and we will place our recording on our YouTube channel. If you don't want to be recorded, you may want to drop off now. Malik, floor is yours. Man. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the another session of Azure Power Lunch. Um, and today's topic is um, API authentication um, with um, OAuth uh, using Azure AD. So quick introduction. My name is Malik Sony. I'm a senior cloud solutions architect at Microsoft and will be the presenter today. So before we jump into the OAuth and AD and implementing the API authentication, there are some key terms um, that we want to revisit. Uh, most likely you're familiar with all. Um, so first of all, OAuth 2.0 protocol, right? So that is an industry standard protocol for authorization. It allows user to grant limited access to its protected resources. And it is designed to work specifically with HTTP and OAuth separates the role of the client from a resource owner. And soon you will see that there are two type of um, parties here. One is the resource and the, um, the client. So in OAuth protocol, basically client requests access to the resource, uh, which is controlled. The access is controlled by the resource owner and hosted in a resource server. So in this case is, is the Active Directory. Um, OIDC, uh, the OpenID Connect, is an authentication and authorization layer built on top of OAuth 2. And Azure Active Directory allows OIDC protocol as well on top of the OAuth. So tokens, uh, specifically called the JWT tokens, JSON web tokens. It's pretty industry standard for um, exchanging information um, about users on the authentication and authorization information. Right? These tokens are lightweight security tokens. Uh, generally, uh, you will see passing the bearer information, but it's called the bearer token to access the protected resource. Right, So client presents this bearer token to the server um, and prove itself to access a resource. Uh, in terms of Azure Active Directory, in this case is an identity provider, right? And, and there could be many different type of identity provider. In this case, we are looking at the AD to implement OAuth security. And Azure AD ensures that uh, users identity permissions and access to the resource are controlled and managed. Uh, by Azure Active Directory. So at any given time, um, if you want to disconnect user, change the password, you want to go to Azure Active Directory instance, and you can certainly do that. Um, in terms of there, there's a concept of app registration for Azure Active Directory and flows for OAuth uh, and OIDC. So app registrations uh, basically is a way uh, to provide authentication and authorization service for the users. So as an application owner, you register an AD application in your Azure Active Directory and use that AD application to interact um, for the permission. And we will take a look at AD application pretty soon. In terms of the flows, there are various flows that OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect provide, right? Um, the one that we are interested in this session is called the client credential flow. So imagine scenario where you have a client application which is non-interactive, is a script or something, right? It cannot enter username and password when prompted. So in those type of scenarios, the client credential flow is used, which permits a web service to use its own credential instead of impersonating a user, right? And the last key term is the Azure AD admin consent, right? In terms of, um, um, so in order to use the permissions and roles um, in Azure AD application, the, the API permission has to be consented by either a global admin, which can consent to the application for entire tenant, or an application owner can consent for a given application scope, right? So the, the consent has to be provided before you can use this, the scope or the roles from within an AD application. So 
So just talk about authentication flow, right? So it's the, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there are two endpoints on Azure, Azure AD. Uh, one is the token endpoint, and second one is the discovery endpoint. So client request for auth bearer token from token endpoint by passing the client ID and secret. And the token endpoint returns a token after authentication. So if it validates the client ID secret, returns a token back to the client. Then client calls the, the protected resource, in this case, the API, with an access token as a authorization header. The web API then performs the validation check to make sure whether the token is valid or not. It talks back to the discovery endpoint and it validates the token, and then if the token is valid, it returns the data requested by client. I think uh, since this scenario will help understand more about the use case, right? So in this specific example, our use case is that we have a file upload API, and we want to expose this API to multiple vendors. Imagine you are collecting a videos from different vendors, right? And you want to expose this API securely so each vendor can have their own credential to upload the data to the API. Now you want your one of your requirement is that you want to control individual vendors access. You should be able to terminate access anytime. You should be able to rotate the password in case the client, it's called the client secret, in case if it is get compromised, right? So those are your key requirements. So to implement this, um, you can implement, you can secure your file upload API using the OAuth and Azure AD. So in, a, in this example, when is implemented, the console application, which is a, some sort of a script which does the automatic uploads, first, acquires a token from Azure Active Directory, right? So as an application owner, you provide each vendor a client secret, um, and then they use that their own specific client secret to obtain a token first. Once the token is obtained, they call upload endpoint on your API with authorization header, which has your better token, which was just obtained. The API once it's called, uh, it validates the token, and I will share a sample code uh, which does the bearer token validation. So, any questions so far? Okay. So, in for the demo, this is what we are going to do. We will register an AAD application representing a resource, which is the API. Then we will register an, another application representing a client. And you can repeat this step for n number of clients of your API. Then we will generate a client secret. Then we will go for through the consent process. And then using Postman, we will request a token. And I will share some code to validate the token. And then I can show you how you can revoke the client access. Okay. All right, so we can go in here. Um, so go to your, um, you can go to the Azure portal and Azure Active Directory uh, and start with the app registrations. And first we want to register the application which represent the resource, right? So add a new registration. And I will just type as resource. But you may want to be descriptive about which resource you are trying to access. And click register, that's all it needs. Now this Applicate now you're in that application, the resource application. Uh, we need to do a couple things here, right? First of all, uh, we need to set the application ID URI. So go ahead and click on this one and set basically 
this we will be using this application ID URI in a uh, as a scope parameter when we make a request. The second thing is that um, we need to create a role. So go ahead and create the app rows, create a new role. Now each res think of it this way, your file upload API can have different kind of roles, right? For example, which allows user to upload a file. Um, another role allows user to download a file. Another user allows user to uh, view the video. Those are all different roles, right? What operations are permitted? You can define it under the role. So in this case, I would say file upload. And application. And then this will be file upload role. OK. Perfect, so this is the setup for your resource um, Azure AD application. Now you need to register a client. So go back to the app registrations, new registration and this say client one. And register. OK, so on the client side. Um, first thing we need to do is add an API permission. So go to API permission and click on add. Now what we are saying is that this client application. Has a permission to my resource API. Um, so in this case, the resource application. You can check file upload role. This is where you can specify what role you want to give to the client, right? Let's say you have a client one which can only upload the files, then you select only upload. In case client two who can do everything, then you can select all the roles. So this gives you the control of what a client application can or cannot do, right? This roles information will be part of your token, and that's how the API application knows what is allowed it, what is not allowed it. So now um, you will notice that as soon as you add an API permission, um, it says that not granted for the tenant, right? The permission, so this is where the consent needs to be granted, and there are two ways you can grant the consent. Most real world, um, you may not be the global admin on the tenant, right? So what I am going to do now um, is not possible because I am the global admin on this tenant, so I can go ahead and grant the consent. So this is one way. The another way you can grant the consent only to your application scope is if you're an application owner, then you can use either the graph API or a Z rest command with appropriate principal ID, client ID and role information. And that way you can grant the permission for your application scope without uh, global admins, uh, without requiring global admin to grant it for across the tenant. Right? There are two ways to do this. But basically you want this green check mark on this API in order for the role information to be present in the token. If this is not consented, the you will be able to still obtain the token, but you will the role information will not be there. And for API to recognize what permission user has, the role information is important. OK. Now, another thing you need is the client secret, right? Because what you're doing is providing a client or the vendor their own unique client ID and a secret kind of a username and password. So go to the secrets and certificates and generate a new client secret. And one and here you can specify how long you want to do this. Um, this allows the rotation of secret. Um, satisfy our need that we should be able to rotate the secrets or remove it if it get compromised. So go ahead and add. So you want to note down this value here because it's only presented one time and after then you cannot read it. So need to copy it somewhere. We put it on a notepad. OK. So while here, 
Um, so this is all done on the client side. So you can generate as many client application as you want based on your number of clients. The you want to copy the client ID as well. So this client ID and a secret becomes your username and password when requesting a token, right? So these are the two pieces of information you need to send it to your vendor and say, hey, these are your credentials. When you make a token call, use this information. Um, I think we are we are done on the setting up the application. So we registered two applications. Again, recap here. Uh, we registered a resource which represents which virtually represents our API and all the operations and the roles. And we registered a client which represents a vendor who can make certain calls based on the permission we gave to them. So with this, um, we can we are ready to obtain the tokens. So if you remember the flow, first thing we need to do is obtain a token. So I have a postman here. The token endpoint um, you can uh, the URL. You can obtain it from your application, right? So you go to the client. And then click on endpoints. And take the token endpoint, right? So this is the token endpoint that you want to you want to pass it to your vendor say put this as a token endpoint so i will copy this one okay all right so it needs um, actually four piece of information to obtain a token apart from client id and secret all right so let me populate the client id first this is our client ID and the secret. Okay. Um, another attribute says grant type. You want to pass this information uh, and it will always be client underscore credential, right? This determines the flow. So this is the static value you want to pass. For the scope, uh, we need to pass the scope ID that we set earlier. So can go back to the portal. And. Go to your resource application. And get the scope ID, so it's called the application ID URI. So make sure you replace. It anything before. Dot default, so for if the app registration. Um, Azure AD app registration, the scope will always be dot default, right? So the URI of your uh, app ID and then the dot default as a scope. So now we are ready to request a token. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have received the token. So this the first step to obtain a token is complete. Now this token is valid for one hour and user can use this token to make a second call to the protected API. So that call looks something like this is you have your post. Endpoint to upload the videos and client will pass authorization header and this will be your bearer token what they have obtained earlier. Right, just replace this with a new bearer token. So I don't have this endpoint uh, available, but this is all it takes for uh, to pass the token from the token endpoint to your um, backend API. So let's take a look at the token itself, right? What we want to see is uh, the token should have the roles. So um, this is a JWT.ms. It's a quick way to inspect your JWT tokens. And once you paste your token here, it will decode the claims and information. So uh, things to note here is the roles information, right? So remember when we created a client application, we gave it a file upload role. And when client request a token, token has an information that this client with this token has a permission to upload a file, right? So what happens is in the API, um, this is the code uh, for the API uh, to to validate the token, right? And we will would like to go over on this one. So every API endpoint, depending on what framework you want to use, uh, but essentially you want to 
inspect a authorization header, grab the token from the authorization header, and then use um, a JWT security token handler to validate the token, right? So in this case, what I'm doing is I am validating few parameters. So I'm validating the audience URI. It has to match the audience URI to make sure that it is my application. Because remember, the token is common for many different application. Um, so you want to nail down to make sure that it is the token that your application is expecting. The second thing you want to validate the issuer. So you can put the issuer here to make sure it's not forged by some, some other issuers. Then the signing keys. Um, is is validated by this well known um, open ID configuration endpoint that Microsoft exposes, right? So it will validate the key that has been signed in this token, which is in fact the key that we are um, we are telling uh, that Microsoft has knowledge of. And then validate lifetime. So this will make sure that if token is expired, um, it, it will um, throw an error message. And issue your signing key. So all this information, the issuer signing key, um, again goes back to the Azure and say the signing key that's used for um, the token signing is in fact the one that we are publishing. So in this case, then just call the um, validate token method and this particular call will be successful um, without any errors if all the criteria has been matched. It will throw an error um, if uh, one of the validation is failing, right? If it either token expired or uh, the audience mismatch uh, or the issue mismatch. And this is where you want to return the message back to user saying the token is not valid. Okay. At the same time, um, you can also um, look for the claims, right? So let me look at the Java example. You can do the same for on it as well. Let's see if I have the claims processing. OK, so. As you remember, um, if we look at our token, we have these specific rules that we want to check against the token to make sure that user has the permission. So in order to validate the rules, it role is nothing but just a claim, right? It's a standard claim. So in the um, verify method, you can say make sure this claim exists, which is the roles, and then this will be the role of your application is a file upload. Right? If that role does not exist, which means that the token you have received is not what the application is expecting. OK, so I'll pause here for for any questions. I don't see any question in the chat. Perfect. OK. All right, so in. Yeah, in terms of demo, that's what I have. Um, let's see. Yep. There is one more resource um, that I want to share is called Microsoft Graph Explorer. So you can use Graph Explorer for one of the purpose uh, with respect to our workflow here. Uh, basically, you want to sign into the Graph Explorer. OK, so once you're signed in, uh, Microsoft Graph Explorer um, exposes a lot of functionality, but in, in the relevance of this session, um, if you remember the consent grant uh, or the permission assignment for the client application, right? So that's something you can do it from Graph Explorer as well. It's called the role assignment. So you can go and search for role as app role assignment. If you um, do the app role assignment using this Graph Explorer. Um, it automatically provides consent for um, the application scope, right? So this is another way 
to um, to do the the, uh, the consent grant for the AD application. And all it takes is you need to have the service principal IDs looked up. And then the resource ID, this will be your client application resource ID and the role ID. So in this case, it will be like file upload role. So each role exposes the GUID information. So if you go back to your app roles, there is this ID identifier, right? So this is where you can grab the ID of your role. And with this information, um, if, when you do the app role assignment, it, the consent is granted. And again, consent is important for the roles to flow into the token. OK, Navid, I think that's all for for the demo today. Thank you, folks. Any sure. questions? OK. Oh. Thanks. Um, I mean, if there are no questions, uh, thanks for presenting and you know everybody thanks for joining the call uh, i will upload the recording as well as the slide deck in our youtube channel so thanks again and uh, see so hope to see everybody next week thank you everyone have a wonderful weekend thank you thanks thank you all